from the WGBH newsroom in Boston, I'm Adam Riley, and you're watching another installment of The Scrum, our ongoing look at politics in Boston and across Massachusetts. I'm joined, as I often am, by WGBH's political analyst. We've got Peter Kadzis here and David Bernstein. David, by the way, also a contributing editor at Boston Magazine. Guys, thank you, as always, for being here. Uh, how were your Thanksgivings? <laughs> were they good? That was yours. It was very good. Excellent. Right. Mine was good, busy but good. But that's not why we're here, right? We're here to talk about Charlie Baker, the Republican gubernatorial nominee in waiting, uh, picking a running mate this week, going with Karen Polito, the former state legislator, also a uh, failed candidate for state treasurer in the last election cycle. What do you two think of the Polito pick for Baker? Well, it's problematic and it's not the best thing in the world, but it's you have to compare it against what the other options were for Charlie Baker. And and in that light, it's actually, I think, probably about as good as he could have done. Okay, so why is it problematic? Well, it's problematic because uh, she does have some, some ties to some conservative views, some ties to Tea Party stuff. She went to an Al Alan West uh, speech uh, event. Uh, he's a very conservative, very controversial, a former uh, congressman from Florida. Um, a, a lot of things that uh, also, she had this little scandal having to do with Red Sox license plates that uh, apparently she managed to uh, to get to people she knew in Shrewsbury, that sort of thing. Uh, so all that's going to come up. But I don't think any of those things are going to hurt Charlie Baker too much. And, uh, it, you know, it gives him a very energetic and appealing running mate who can raise money and, and go run, around the state for the, him. The, the, the best thing Karen Polito has going for her is she plays well on TV. That's very important. Um, you know, she's a terrific TV candidate. She definitely covers his right flank. Um, and let's not forget, she was the campaign manager f when uh, former U.S. Attorney Sullivan ran for Senate. So she has those ties to the serious right wing. Myself, I wonder why she plays footsie with uh, the sort of fruitcake right wing. I, 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 I think that's a potential compromise. But given the, the, the shallowness of the GOP bet, bench, she's not a bad choice. So she right. helps him on the right, also helps him in central Massachusetts. She's a woman, so she provides gender balance. Is and there TV? And TV, good on TV. on TV. Well, uh, along those lines, is there any chance that she is so sort of uh, hot or high energy? in person and on TV that she could end up overshadowing Baker? Because he can be a little understated. His running mate last time, Richard Tissay, made Baker look hyperactive. <laughs> but now we've got someone who's maybe going to look a little more vital than the, can the main candidate. Is that uh, worrisome at all? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that he's going to use her in a very sort of low level, sort of low profile way. She'll be out there mostly trying to, uh, to energize Republicans and conservative moderates, uh, you know, sort of being out there uh, talking him up for the most part, um, and also trying to sort of keep smooth things over, for instance, at the state Republican convention, where they might be a little unhappy with, with him for being too much of a moderate. She sort of smooths that over a little bit. Um, you know, it, she's going to, he's going to pick his spots for her. Um, she'll also be sort of the attack dog against the Democrats uh, nominee mm -hmm. at some point, but uh, I don't think she's going to play a huge role to overshadow him. No, in, and they have a long time to get used to each other. Right. Um, that's a real plus. I mean, the average person, people with real lives, aren't following this closely yeah. right now. And I think by the time um, the average voter starts to pay attention, they'll have their act yeah. down pat really worked out together. So uh, it'll work. It's worth bearing in mind, too, I think. You saw some Democratic pushback, people saying, oh, you know, he's compromised his, his candidacy. <laughs> she's, good Lord. She's a Tea Party heroine. His candidacy is doomed. But she didn't come, you know, w incredibly close yeah. to Steve Grossman running for treasurer, but she got a million votes, uh, yeah, give it, or take it was, a few. Uh, you know, it was a disappointment for the Republicans that she lost in a year that it looked like, you know, yeah. 2010 looked like they really had a chance for that. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I think that that some of the early attacks on her are not going to stick. She didn't run as a, as a hard right conservative back then. Um, I don't think that no. these attacks are going to hurt her. I'm, I'm going to obey the gong. Look, if the worst thing you can say about her is she was involved in a, a scandal about Red Sox license plates, <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't worry about it too much. On that note, Peter Kadzis, David Bernstein, thank you as always for being here. Thank you as always for watching The Scrum. I'm Adam Riley, and we'll see you again soon.